Okay, I'm going to do something I haven't done forever. Okay, don't think I'm staying up here and continuing to make videos or anything because I'm not doing that. But this particular topic, I will come up and do this just because this is where I started. This topic is where I started when I started researching. Okay, and this would have been back in 2000 middle of to late 2006 when I came up on YouTube okay when it wasn't owned by the current owners okay when you can only do a 10 minute video you could do 10 minutes and two seconds if you want three seconds it wouldn't go up <laughs> I know I was here then they eventually extended it to 15 minutes then it eventually got to where it is now. You couldn't do live streams neither. By the way, that was added on later too. Used to have its own private email that didn't email everywhere on the internet, but would email from account to account on YouTube. Uh, used to, but you know, when you're fixing what ain't broke to stop people from communicating under an agenda, and that's why the email ain't here no more. But we'll go on because it's not about that, okay? But this is the topic, okay, right here. So I'm going to play part of this, and of course, we're going to talk about this as we go. You know, I find it very funny on how they've waited all these years, and they're still not going to be honest, but they're now going to bring it up. But they're not going to be honest, but they're going to bring it up, okay? Amazing, it even got brought up at all. <laughs> Let's go. Last week I delved here into recent data from the CDC suggesting major problems with regard to the mental health of our adolescents, surges in depression and suicidal ideation, especially true for our girls. This week I found cause to worry about young men. This headline from The Hill, it caught my eye. Most young men are single, most young women are not. The story reported that as of 2022... Oh, no. Most young men are single when most young women are not. Hold on. That was going on in 2006. How come it's only... How come it's 2023 before you'd even see it on... You'd even see it like somewhere like on CNN? How come it took from 2006 to 2023? Ah, uh, okay. You know, you act like um, this is a new, oh, never do this go on. Okay, but we'll go ahead. New research center found 30% of U.S. adults are neither married, living with a partner, nor engaged in a committed relationship. Nearly half of all young adults are single. Now, look at these numbers. 34% of women... Twice as many, a whopping 63% of men. What? Wrong. The numbers are wrong. You know, back in 2009, somewhere in that area, there was a female who did a video called Douchebag 101, and she pointed it out that she was a, a she, a female. And the statistics then was 20%, 20%. Okay, okay, of men. This is all women were chasing. So she says 80% of the female population, 80% was chasing after 20% of the men. And that's no lie. That was actually pretty accurate. And since that time, it's gotten even a lot worse. So you know these numbers are not correct. It's a lot higher than what they want you to know. This is a worldwide problem because this was an agenda. It explains that. I pulled the Pew study and I read with interest. Turns out since 2019, the share of single men who say they're looking for dates or a relationship has declined from 61% to 50%. In 2018, 28% of men ages 18 to 30 reported they'd had no sex in the past year compared with 18% of women of that age. The Hill Report said men in their 20s are more likely than women in their 20s to be romantically uninvolved 
sexually dormant, friendless, and lonely. They stand at the vanguard of an epidemic of declining marriage, sexuality, and relationships that afflicts all of young America. Among the causes, among the factors, a reliance on social media and online porn. But also, more young women are hooking up with each other or dating and marrying slightly older men. Ah, uh, so much he leaves out. So much. How about causes? Double standards. Feminism. The war on women was never a war on women. There was actually a war on men. See, the war was never on women. It was on men. But, of course, just like what these people do, they say everything in reverse. When they do tell truths, they don't tell whole truths. They tell partial truths. That's right. All the numbers are skewed. The reason there's so many men that can't get somebody in their life is from many, many years of social engineering and the use of a TV set as entertainment. Conditioning people's perceptions. Creating gender roles, creating divide. Telling a man born as a boy what they are and what their responsibilities in life is from the time they was a child. Telling a girl what they are and what their responsibilities, which was next to none are. Deciding, okay, what are the roles of each gender? Assigning a behavior to people. Social engineering. The destruction of the family unit was first talked and planned in the late 1800s. They have done many steps to destroy the family over the many years. Okay? And nobody touched it because it was taboo. That's right, taboo. I come along and I touched it. I don't know did I touch it. Now, but let's go on. And heterosexual women are getting more choosy. Other troubling statistics about men come from a 2021 study from the Survey Center for American Life. They found the share of men who have six or more close friends, which in 1990 was 55%, by 2021 had shrunk by half. Meanwhile, those with literally zero close friends, which stood at 3% in 1990, has zoomed to 15%. An expert quoted by The Hill said this disconnect can have catastrophic consequences for young men. You think? Quote, in the worst case scenario, the young American man's social disconnect can have tragic consequences. Young men commit suicide at four times the rate of young women. Younger women are largely responsible for rising rates of mass shootings, a trend that some researchers link to their growing social That's what isolation. I agree with them. Well, those words reminded that. me of a... Con no, I'm not trying to say all women. But they are largely responsible. They know the power they have. They know that man has no choice and that the men are all, you know, they're chasing such a low number of men, are not wanting men, and leaving men to, uh, and you know. I mean, what can I say? What did you expect? When a person's rejected over and over and over and they do everything society told them to do, everything. They have a job, they have an income, they dress nice, they keep themselves clean, they're respectable, they treat everybody equally, they don't, you know, I mean, they do everything society told them to do. And in one to five seconds, ah, you're rejected. Time in, time out, year after year after year after year after year. Meanwhile, you get to watch all these women just picking the ones they want, having their lives, picking the ones they want, having their lives, and destroying the men they're with. That's right. Now, don't get me wrong, because I've seen both sides of this. I've seen men that was very domineering, controlling, and abusive at the woman, okay, and using the Bible as, I'm the head of the household, blah, 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 okay. You know, I've heard the saying, who wears the pants in your family? And I've said, nobody. We run around naked. And they didn't like that answer. Well, that's because when you're saying who wears the pants in the family, you're saying who's the slave and who's the master. Okay? 
So is the woman the slave and the man's the master, or is the woman the master and the man's the slave? I would have to say the later would be your answer. They would love to have you believe it was the other way around. But if it was the other way around, then it would be an epidemic of women who couldn't get, not men. Conversation that I had over a year ago right here on CNN with NYU professor Scott Galloway. But the issue is when you have a group of men, the lower half of attractiveness of men in online dating, which has doubled now, it's about half of relationships and the top 20 percent of men in terms of attractiveness get about 60 percent of the interest. You end up with a group of men that are more prone to conspiracy theory, more prone to misogynistic content, more prone to believe, not believe in. Oh, no, you end up with a group of men that has nothing to do in their life that starts looking into what's going on. You end up with a group of men that's not conspiracy theory. Conspiracy, yes. Theory, no. Taboo, not to be talked about. Double standards through social engineering, up the yin yang. Mm -hmm. Hollywood, oh my God, I could go on and on and on and I could show, I could put so much in this video to show what I'm saying, how accurate I am that it would blow your mind. I could turn this into a 20 hour video. Well, we're not gonna do that. Okay, wouldn't be hard because there's that kind of evidence. All I gotta do is use Hollywood itself and social engineering and sitcoms. I can show you so much your head will fall off but it shaped our consciousness. It shaped our behaviors. That's what it was about. Social engineering, an agenda to destroy the family unit, population reduction, the Great Reset, Agenda 21, 2030. Oh, what are we living? There we go. Let's go on. Climate change. So these, this is the American story. If it's written with a pen whose ink is failing young men, does, does not end well. This is you an existential crisis, failing again. young men. As always, Professor Galloway was prescient. Back with me now is Scott Galloway. He's a professor of marketing at NYU Stern School of Business. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's the host of the Professor G podcast and author of multiple best-selling books, most recently, Adrift, America in 100 Charts. Scott, thanks for returning. Hasn't the advantage well, always been, been to book, those with okay. the looks and or the money? What's changed? Uh, first off, Mike, I just want to say thank you for uh, raising this issue a year ago when a lot of media um, companies were afraid to talk about this for fear of its... Oh, for fear of taboo. Hold on, let me get you right. He's thanking this man for raising this topic a year ago. Okay, hold on. This topic was raised way back in like 2006 by myself. It was raised before me because when I came onto YouTube, there was such a thing as called men's right activist. Oh no! And then there was an industry called the pickup artist industry. Oh no! They're all linked. So see, just a year ago, that's why I said so. Hold on. So you're the expert because you've been around what? Two years maybe? Who's paying your paycheck? That's the reason you're here. Oh, that's right. By buying your book being pro-men was somehow being anti-women. Look, this is returning to the natural order of things. For the majority of history, a small percentage of men have had the majority of the mating opportunities. But in America, we decided to make a huge investment in what would probably be the greatest innovation. Well, so hold on. What do you say there? Let's get this correct. I'm not going to keep going because then you'll figure what you said. The majority of history, do you want me to replay? Okay. A small number of men always had the majority of women as of the majority of history he says disagree totally social engineering so I told you they're not going to tell you the truth they're going to tell you what they're allowed to tell you which is going to be little bits of truth you know nuggets of truth with propaganda which is lies which is BS in history and that is in the middle class from 1945 to 1947 Seven million men returned from war were discharged from the service, and we decided to give them the GI Bill, uh, subsidized mortgages, 
Uh, we saw education rates come from 5 to 45 percent. They were valued, and we have such a strong uh, manufacturing base he that you had truth, massive uh, marriage and household formation. And some men were seen as more economically and emotionally viable. And you've seen the reverse happen with the out- offshoring of much of our manufacturing base, with a society that quite frankly doesn't value young men. When we talk about problems with people of color or women, we see it as a systemic societal problem. When we see problems or the stats that you just mentioned, we see it as accountability or the men just need to level up. But married households and household formation are better citizens. They vote. They save at twice the rate. They're less likely to commit crimes. And we have fewer and fewer uh, viable men. We have a dearth of economically and emotionally uh, viable men. But the middle class is an accident. Unless you invest in it, it doesn't happen. Eisenhower decided to invest $500 billion in a national highway uh, project that created tons of jobs. We have, uh, and by the way, the tax rate back then was 91%. We raised money and we redistributed in social programs that made young people more economically viable. And then, Scott, you toss in the influence of social media and how relationships today, they don't come from, in our era, happenstance and mingling, right? They, they come from swiping, and that further accelerates this issue. Am I right? Oh, it's, it's been the chaser to it. I mean, to have, to have an honest conversation about this, we have to be honest. And that is that men and women have different mating criteria. One quarter of women, excuse me, one quarter of men saying economic viability is a key criteria in a mate. Three quarters of women say that is important. And when you're on a two-dimensional format where now it's one in two relationships begin online, it used to be one in four just a few years ago, it gets distilled down to a small number of criteria. Specifically for men, it's does she look attractive? And specifically for men, is is he able to signal his ability to garner resources in the future? An average attractive male on Tinder gets swiped less than 1% of the time. And there's three men on Tinder for every one woman. So you've distilled it, you've taken out one of the key components of mating dynamics, and that is vibe, humor, body language, pheromones, the ability to be, quite frankly, a little bit persistent in the pursuit of a romantic relationship. We have no third places anymore, no places to meet. People aren't going to bars, they aren't sports league, they aren't going to church, they aren't even going to work. So it gets distilled down to very one or two dimensional attributes. And the reality is women are much choosier than men and they can apply those screens and they allocate all of their attention to a small number of men that results in just essentially at the end of the day, a lack of opportunities. Chris Williamson, Chris Williams uh, summarized it perfectly, called it the high heels effect. In the last 40 years, more women have graduated from college than men and they're not interested in mating with non-college grads. They now own more homes, single women than single men. So what you have is women say they won't date anyone shorter than them, 50% of them. Effectively, what you have metaphorically over the last 40 years is women have been getting taller and taller, and men have been getting shorter and shorter. How many of us have said, I know a ton of great single women, they can't find a date? That's not true. They can't find a date. They can't find a man they find economically or emotionally viable. Correct. If we don't make a massive investment in young people and make more economically and emotionally viable men... We're going to see a lack of household formation. We're going to see a decline in the middle class. And we're going to see, quite frankly, just a lot of young men who are terrible citizens. So is the answer to fix this economically? And who will champion this conversation? You you (laughs) felt obliged to compliment me at the outset because we had engaged on this a year ago. And here I am revisiting it. And I read into that the fact that you think that it's politically incorrect even to have this dialogue. What's taboo? When you're seen as advocating for men because of the 300,000-year head start we've had, it seems somehow it's anti-female. There's a lot of very unfortunate misogyny online that is masquerading as being pro-men. A lot of TikTok celebrities who talk about... Yeah, like MRA and Karen Stroud advertising to be fighting for men's rights, when in reality she's not there for men's rights, was never bought for men. No, when it was an agenda the whole time. Brought on by the same people giving you the great reset. <laughs> when it's always been an agenda, and I said it way back then, and I'll say it now. This guy has told some truth, but like I told you, you got to have the spin. I just get a kick out of their acting like how this is just now being discovered. Oh, God, it just, I fall out of my chair. 
this is a worldwide thing because it is an agenda. Okay, the population the reduction, the birth rate is under replacement level in every single country across the globe. And it's not by accident. Okay, but the rejection is being done by the women. But it's be done through social engineering because they shaped your behaviors with weapons. They sold you as entertainment. Well, the school system and a TV set and now computers and social networks. and But just the same, they broke down people. People don't know how to be friends. People don't know how to get along. People don't know what a date is. They all think a date is about sex. Okay? They don't realize that relationships are built. They don't know the foundations. The foundation of a relationship between a man and a woman, they have to become friends first. Well, hmm, the women use that as a rejection line. Just friends. We know. It's factual. It's used as a rejection line. A foundation. Then you wonder why the divorce rate is where it's at. You know, if I built my house on quicksand, it would sink too. If I built it on the side of the mountain and slid to the bottom and fucking crashed and burned. I mean, there you go. What do you think's happening to men and women? He's talking of a foundation there. These are foundations. Friendship, trust, having things in common. Nobody wears the pants in the house. You're not her boss. She's not yours. Compromise. Growing up. It's not about sex. When I came on the scene, the only thing that existed was MRA and PUA. Since that time, we had Barbarossa, who was an MRA, who created the name MIGTO, men going their own way. Okay, then we had the elite created name out of a university in Canada called Incel. And then we had these clowns try to take what I done and category the freaking internet out and put TFL in with incel. TFL was never incel, never will be incel, ever, ever, ever. TFL has never been about getting sex, ever, not even once. So there's your reality right in your face. Okay, but they're not going to tell you that. They've taken all these years just to come up and do this. You know, 10 years ago, if I would have done a Karen video, I would have been attacked hard. Nowadays, Karen videos are everywhere. Why? Because the same people responsible for what's going on here are also now removing the women from the pedestal they placed them on. You're getting ready to witness the end of the family unit completely. The dating scene is dead. Advocating for men, it's just thinly veiled misogyny. What do we need? We need more freshman seats in colleges. We need a massive investment in vocational training. We need to figure out a way to get more permitting for housing so young people can afford housing. We need to recognize our economic policies, literally allocate wealth from young people to old people. The percentage of wealth that young people control under the age of 40 has been cut from 12% to 6%. These are concerted, deliberate decisions. We did away with the child tax credit. We don't want to make it any easier for people to have kids, but seniors just got their largest cost of living adjustment increase in history. We have made the decision to make it harder and more expensive for people to find each other, for people to mate, and for people to have children. And without children, we turn into Japan and Italy, and that is we go into population decline, and our Oops. economy goes into, into decline. What did he say there? Oops. What I said years ago. Population reduction. You think it's an accident that Japan and Italy are having this issue? This issue is going on in every single country. It was an agenda. It was the biggest psyop in all of history because it affected every single man and woman on this planet. We are about to become a society by the turn of the century. There will be eight times as many people over the age of 60 and half as many kids under the age of five. 
nursery schools will become these strange situations with old people staring through fences at these creatures they don't see in the wild called children. Is this the world we want? Do we want a lack of kids? Do we want a lack of ability to create households? The happiest, most proper, prosperous, most purposeful people in America are middle class families. And we have made a concerted decision to punch it in the gut and make it harder for that type of family formation. And we're going to lose prosperity. There you go. I'm going to stop it right there. I will leave the link underneath so that you can go watch this report without me. But the thing is, is they lie their teeth off and they tell truths. You have truth in here and you have deception in here. And they're not going to give you the root cause. No way. They're just not going to do it. See, this is where I got attacked hard because I connected the dots. I pointed this stuff out for years. Even Mark Pasty will come up and did a three-hour thing on this very same topic. Of course, not when I did, but I was already here and already done it. Already done it. I done pointed it out over and over and over. Okay? And people get mad. People deny. People blah, blah, blah. They don't want to think that this could be happening. It's the typical all stuff that always happens, but it's right in your face, and it couldn't be any more than in your face. If you want to get technical, there was a saying that was said by Mr. Hulk back when. Got to remember, I may have founded TFL, but I always said it was never about sex, ever. Ever. And I pointed out where it came from. I connected the dots and showed you where the problem come from. Over and over and over again. And the only reason I come up here today at all was because this is where I started. And this is an NWO agenda. Always has been, always will be, end of story. It's not an accident it was considered taboo. It's not an accident that there's double standards. It's not an accident that the Violence Against Women's Act had wrote into the law that a man can never be a victim of domestic abuse at the hands of a woman. Give an open reign for the woman to abuse the man. It's not an accident that they taught little kids in school that boys don't hit girls. Why would you bring a gender up to little kids? Why would you say nobody hits nobody and leave the gender out of it? No, no, we got to do the gender thing because we can create division. We can destroy these people. In today's society, if you look around, they're really trying to destroy the kids. Okay, and family even's dead. It's gone. In today's world, it would come down to women love men. Men love women. Women, oh, no, no, I'll get that right. Women hate men. That's right. But women love women. Women love women, right? And men love women, right? Okay, so we got men love women, women love women. Women hate men, and men hate men. That's what I was trying to get out. So it literally is just like that. Women love themselves, selfishness, and they love other women. Okay, men love women. Women chase that attention. If it's in that small little percentage, they're chasing that is, okay? But men, they're competing. It's all a game. It's all an arena. It's all a competition. That's right. And, you know, he said earlier, it's always been throughout history, a small number of men. It was all the women chased after only the small number. So what they're telling you is TFL has been here all of history. Complete lie. What they're not telling you is it was social engineered into existence. What they're not telling you is part of the outcome of the end of the family unit, of transhumanism, of no more mom, no more dad, babies born in a lab, raised by the state. Yeah, they're not going to tell you this part. Okay, they'll never tell you this part, and I can't even guarantee you, but this is, uh, you see what I put at the beginning of the video. So if you take it down, you're violating your own, but I expect you to violate your own. 
you always do, right? I'm not doing videos on a regular basis no more, so you can hang that up. It just ain't happening. I've done it for a lot of years, and I still speak out wherever I go, but I'm not coming up back up on the net to make regular content no more. Them days are gone. Everything's out here for you to see, and if you can't see it by now, there's no help for you. And if you people don't back up or listen to real truth that's being told to you, well, then I guess the people behind this win, don't they? I can't feel sorry for people who won't stand up for themselves. And there's nothing I can say about this, but this is an educational video where I'm going to tell you the truth once again because I was here. And I'm going to point out the deceptions they're saying, whether they like it or not, because as he said, the truth needs to be spoken. So with that, I'm out of here, but I just had to fucking put this one up here because this is my beginning when I came on in late 2006 and gave true force loneliness to the manosphere. Then later on, military intelligence had to go ahead and flip the script and label out the manosphere in the categories and take something that has nothing to do with anything but truth and put it into something they created so they can demonize it, destroy it, bury it. And that's exactly what they've done. And that was incel. Yep, but you remember the name incel? When they're all done with you, that's where they want to put you, is inside a cell. A jail cell. With that being said, I'm out of here.